people have tried to do uh, uh, find ways of valuing it and uh, there are as many techniques as there are people who have studied the matter. That doesn't mean that these are arbitrary methods, by the way. There has to be some kind of a justification in terms of the fulfillment of human needs, let's say, just for the sake of argument. So I will now, we're not talking about sacred groves, for example, which have enormous value to people who regard them as sacred groves. Uh, now, somebody who is committed to the values which uh, to, 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 to religious values, to them there is no price of a sacred grove, it's infinite. Or put it there, they will lay down their life to protect it. So ignore those cases, because those cases are the easy ones. Because it matters so much, society does protect them. Or, unless there is a rival religious group which wants to destroy it, that's a different matter. Okay. So in civilized society, for certain, that extreme form of that uh, extreme form of capital asset. Uh, societies ring fence them, so to speak, that they are not to be touched. Temples, churches, sacred groves. That's one extreme. Uh, what about a patch of forest or a wetland? It's doing a lot of things for us, a wet piece of wetland. It purifies water. So one way of thinking about that part of the service that a wetland is, uh, provides us is to ask how much would it cost to purify the water by installing a purification plant. So that might give us a benchmark along around which to value because we need clean water. And if nature is providing it for us, then if that part of nature is destroyed, how can we recover the clean water? Well, we use technology, say, a purification plant. So that gives us at least some idea of what the, its worth. But of course, the wetland provides more than just that. It provides uh, habitat for birds and bees and insects. So how do we value them? All right. You might, some of us will say, oh, well, it's, people like to go and visit the wetland because of the birds. Ornithologists do that. So maybe we should at least start by asking how much ornithologists and other people pay to observe it on an animal basis, observe the, the, those populations. Uh, and so there's a whole bunch of researchers who will follow that route. It's called the travel cost method, you won't believe it, of valuing uh, natural sites of beauty. Because you're, you're essentially saying, people, if people are willing to pay to see them, then that's what, how they value it. And therefore, let's put a price to that object, value to that object based on the willingness to pay. And it's not a question of they're saying it, they're actually doing it, they're traveling. So now that's one possibility. Another possible way of valuing these uh, birds and bees and insects, perhaps people don't go to see insects, by the way. <laughs> they just go to see the birds if you're an ornithologist. But but the insects out there, why are they so valuable? Well, because they pollinate. And that's a service. So you might then ask, what's the value of pollination? Now here's a kind of technique which has been used. Um, I'm still answering your question because there are many ways of cutting into this problem. And I'm just giving you illustrations. So suppose you have a patch of forest and the forest has a boundary, it ends at this point, and then there are farm, farmlands next to the forest. Uh, now these insects hang out in the forest, but they go to the farmland to get nectar and do their pollination stuff. Okay. But now, like humans, they don't like to travel that much. 
So on the whole, they'll be concentrated in the neighborhood, neighboring first set of plots of that part. And a few will travel some more. And a few are still will travel some more, and so forth. Now, there are techniques of trying to, of determining the contribution that these insects make to farm productivity. Now, other things being equal, the productivity of a distant farm will be lower than the productivity of the farm next door to the forest. Now, if you look at the difference between the two, you'll be able to get a sense of the word of pollination. So, I mean, it sounds odd, no? But there we are. There are many methods, and you just have to be clever in identifying ways to approximate their work. Now, none of these really pick up all the features that we want, but it's, a, but it's an imperfect world. You do the best you can.